Noether's theorem states that every differentiable symmetry of the action of a physical system has a corresponding conservation law. The theorem was proven by German mathematician Emmy Noether in 1915 and published in 1918. The action of a physical system is the integral over time of a Lagrangian function, from which the system's behavior can be determined by the principle of least action. Noether's theorem is used in theoretical physics and the calculus of variations. A generalization of the formulations on constants of motion in Lagrangian and Hamiltonian mechanics. It does not apply to systems that cannot be modeled with a Lagrangian alone. In particular, dissipative systems with continuous symmetries need not have a corresponding conservation law. Basic illustrations and background. As an illustration, if a physical system behaves the same regardless of how it is oriented in space, its Lagrangian is rotationally symmetric. From this symmetry, Noether's theorem dictates that the angular momentum of the system be conserved as a consequence of its laws of motion. The physical system itself need not be symmetric. A jagged asteroid tumbling in space conserves angular momentum despite its asymmetry. It is the laws of its motion that are symmetric. As another example, if a physical process exhibits the same outcomes regardless of place or time, then its Lagrangian is symmetric under continuous translations in space and time. By Noether's theorem, these symmetries account for the conservation laws of linear momentum and energy within this system, respectively. Noether's theorem is important, both because of the insight it gives into conservation laws, and also as a practical calculational tool. It allows investigators to determine the conserved quantities from the observed symmetries of a physical system. Conversely, it allows researchers to consider whole classes of hypothetical Lagrangians with given invariants to describe a physical system. As an illustration, suppose that a physical theory is proposed which conserves a quantity x. A researcher can calculate the types of Lagrangians that conserve x through a continuous symmetry. Due to Noether's theorem, the properties of these Lagrangians provide further criteria to understand the implications and judge the fitness of the new theory. There are numerous versions of Noether's theorem, with varying degrees of generality. The original version only applied to ordinary differential equations and not partial differential equations. The original versions also assume that the Lagrangian only depends upon the first derivative, while later versions generalize the theorem to Lagrangians depending on the nth derivative. There are natural quantum counterparts of this theorem, expressed in the Ward-Takahashi identities. Generalizations of Noether's theorem to superspaces are also available. Informal statement of the theorem. All fine technical points aside, Noether's theorem can be stated informally if a system has a continuous symmetry property. Then there are corresponding quantities whose values are conserved in time. A more sophisticated version of the theorem involving fields states that, to every differentiable symmetry generated by local actions, there corresponds a conserved current. The word symmetry in the above statement refers more precisely to the covariance of the form that a physical law takes with respect to a one-dimensional Lie group of transformations satisfying certain technical criteria. The conservation law of a physical quantity is usually expressed as a continuity equation. The formal proof of the theorem utilizes the condition of invariance to derive an expression for a current associated with a conserved physical quantity. In modern terminology, the conserved quantity is called the Noether charge while the flow carrying that charge is called the Noether current. The Noether current is defined up to a solenoidal vector field. In the context of gravitation, Felix Klein's statement of Noether's theorem for action I stipulates for the invariance. If an integral I is invariant under a continuous group G rho with rho parameters, then rho linearly independent combinations of the Lagrangian expressions are divergences. 
Historical context. A conservation law states that some quantity x in the mathematical description of a system's evolution remains constant throughout its motion, it is, an invariant. Mathematically, the rate a change of x vanishes, such quantities are said to be conserved, they are often called constants of motion. For example, if the energy of a system is conserved, its energy is invariant at all times which imposes a constraint on the system's motion and may help in solving for it. Aside from insights that such constants of motion give in to the nature of a system, they are a useful calculational tool. For example, an approximate solution can be corrected by finding the nearest state that satisfies the suitable conservation laws. The earliest constants of motion discovered were momentum and energy which were proposed in the 17th century by René Descartes and Gottfried Leibniz on the basis of collision experiments, and refined by subsequent researches. Isaac Newton was the first to enunciate the conservation of momentum in its modern form, and showed that it was a consequence of Newton's third law. According to general relativity, the conservation laws of linear momentum, energy and angular momentum are only exactly true globally when expressed in terms of the sum of the stress-energy tensor and the Landau-Lifshitz stress-energy momentum pseudo-tensor. The local conservation of non-gravitational linear momentum and energy in a free-falling reference frame is expressed by the vanishing of the covariant divergence of the stress-energy tensor. Another important conserved quantity discovered in studies of the celestial mechanics of astronomical bodies is the laplace runge lens vector. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, physicists developed more systematic methods for discovering invariants. A major advance came in 1788 with the development of Lagrangian mechanics, which is related to the principle of least action. In this approach, the state of the system can be described by any type of generalized coordinates q. The laws of motion need not be expressed in a Cartesian coordinate system, as was customary in Newtonian mechanics. The action is defined as the time integral i of a function known as the Lagrangian L where the dot over q signifies the rate of change of the coordinates q. Hamilton's principle states that the physical path q, the one actually taken by the system, is a path for which infinitesimal variations in that path cause no change in i, at least up to first order. This principle results in the Euler-Lagrange equations, thus, if one of the coordinates, say qk, does not appear in the Lagrangian, the right-hand side of the equation is zero, and the left-hand side requires that where the momentum is conserved throughout the motion, thus, the absence of the ignorable coordinate qk from the Lagrangian implies that the Lagrangian is unaffected by changes or transformations of qk, the Lagrangian is invariant, and is said to exhibit a symmetry under such transformations. This is the seed idea generalized in Noether's theorem. Several alternative methods for finding conserved quantities were developed in the 19th century, especially by William Rowan Hamilton. For example, he developed a theory of canonical transformations which allowed change in coordinates so that some coordinates disappeared from the Lagrangian, as above, resulting in conserved canonical momenta. Another approach, and perhaps the most efficient for finding conserved quantities, is the hamilton jacobi equation. Mathematical expression. Simple form using perturbations The essence of Noether's theorem is generalizing the ignorable coordinates outlined. Imagine that the action I defined above is invariant under small perturbations of the time variable t and the generalized coordinates q, in a notation commonly used in physics, where the perturbations delta t and delta q are both small, but variable. For generality, assume there are n such symmetry transformations of the action, i.e., transformations leaving the action unchanged, labeled by an index r equals 1, 2, 3, n. Then the resultant perturbation can be written as a linear sum of the individual types of perturbations where epsilon are infinitesimal parameter coefficients corresponding to each 
generator TR of time evolution, and generator QR of the generalized coordinates. For translations, QR is a constant with units of length. For rotations, it is an expression linear in the components of Q, and the parameters make up an angle. Using these definitions, Noether showed that the end quantities are conserved. Examples time invariance for illustration, consider a Lagrangian that does not depend on time, i.e., that is invariant under changes tt plus delta t, without any change in the coordinates q. In this case, n equals 1, t equals 1 and q equals 0. The corresponding conserved quantity is the total energy h translational invariance consider a Lagrangian which does not depend on in coordinate qk, so it is invariant under changes qk qk plus delta qk. In that case, n equals 1, t equals 0, and qk equals 1. The conserved quantity is the corresponding momentum pk in special and general relativity. These apparently separate conservation laws are aspects of a single conservation law, that of the stress-energy tensor. That is derived in the next section. Rotational invariance The conservation of the angular momentum L equals R times P is analogous to its linear momentum counterpart. It is assumed that the symmetry of the Lagrangian is rotational, i.e., that the Lagrangian does not depend on the absolute orientation of the physical system in space. For concreteness, Assume that the Lagrangian does not change under small rotations of an angle delta theta about an axis n. Such a rotation transforms the Cartesian coordinates. By the equation since time is not being transformed, t equals zero. Taking delta theta as the epsilon parameter and the Cartesian coordinates are as the generalized coordinates q. The corresponding Q variables are given by then Noether's theorem states that the following quantity is conserved, in other words, the component of the angular momentum L along the n-axis is conserved, if n is arbitrary, i.e., if the system is insensitive to any rotation, then every component of L is conserved, in short. Angular momentum is conserved, field theory version although useful in its own right. The version of Noether's theorem just given is a special case of the general version derived in 1915. To give the flavor of the general theorem, a version of the Noether theorem for continuous fields in four-dimensional space-time is now given. Since field theory problems are more common in modern physics than mechanics problems, this field theory version is the most commonly used version of Noether's theorem. Let there be a set of differentiable fields phi defined over all space and time. For example, the temperature T would be representative of such a field, being a number defined at every place and time. The principle of least action can be applied to such fields. But the action is now an integral over space and time lets the action be invariant under certain transformations of the space-time coordinates x mu han. The fields phi where the transformations can be indexed by r equals 1, 2, 3. And for such systems, Noether's theorem states that there are n conserved current densities in such cases. The conservation law is expressed in a four-dimensional way which expresses the idea that the amount of a conserved quantity within a sphere cannot change unless some of it flows out of the sphere. For example, electric charge is conserved. The amount of charge within a sphere cannot change unless some of the charge leaves the sphere. For illustration, consider a physical system of fields that behaves the same under translations in time and space. As considered above, in other words, is constant in its third argument. In that case, n equals 4, 1 for each dimension of space and time. Since only the positions in space-time are being warped, not the fields, the psi are all zero and the x mu nu equal the Kronecker delta delta mu nu, where we have used mu instead of r for the index. In that case, Noether's theorem corresponds to the conservation law for the stress-energy tensor T mu nu the conservation of electric charge. By contrast, can be derived by considering 0 x mu nu equals 0 and psi linear in the fields phi themselves. 
In quantum mechanics, the probability amplitude psi of finding a particle at a point x is a complex field phi, because it ascribes a complex number to every point in space and time. The probability amplitude itself is physically unmeasurable. Only the probability p equals psi 2 can be inferred from a set of measurements. Therefore, the system is invariant under transformations of the psi field and its complex conjugate field psi asterisk that leave psi to unchanged, such as a complex rotation. In the limit when the phase theta becomes infinitesimally small, delta theta, it may be taken as the parameter epsilon, while the psi are equal to i psi and minus i psi asterisk, respectively. A specific example is the klein borden equation, the relativistically correct version of the Schrödinger equation for spinless particles, which has the Lagrangian density in this case. Noether's theorem states that the conserved current equals which, when multiplied by the charge on that species of particle, equals the electric current density due to that type of particle. This gauge invariance was first noted by Hermann W. E. Weyl and is one of the prototype gauge symmetries of physics.